back to the program. This is Meet the Ministers, and my guest on the show this evening is Curtis Pitts. Curtis, we started talking about life growing up in Cairns. What was it like? I mean, you've had all sorts of jobs leading up to your career in politics, spent a lot of time in those North Queensland areas. Was it a good place to grow up as a kid? Uh, I'm a really proud boy from Gordon Vale. And, I think um, everybody is, though, isn't they? <laughs> I think you've got to be parochial to a point about your yeah. hometown, but uh, I couldn't think of anywhere better to have grown up. Um, look, it's a, it's a really nice town, small town, but not too small. And, uh, you know, we never had uh, had to want for anything by way of local facilities and sports to play, um, you know, and I've had a great core group of friends that I grew up with uh, going from preschool through to, uh, to um, grade 10 at school and I changed schools for senior mm -hmm. uh, which meant I was very fortunate to meet a whole bunch of new people uh, in grade 11 and 12 in, in Cairns. So um, look, uh, yeah, I think it's a great place to, to be and um, look, sometimes uh, you know, the opportunities that you need to pursue in life, um, you need to, uh, to, uh, to go away to, uh, to come back if that makes any sense. So um, I, uh, I did a university degree um, with a Bachelor of Arts in politics. Uh, had a very strong um, focus on being a journalist, and um, in trying to get um, work as a uh, as a news uh, in news radio, yeah, yeah. I uh, I fell into um, being a copywriter, and uh, I sort of said, "Oh, what's that?" Because I didn't come from an advertising background, yeah. but uh, obviously I'd love to write, and uh, very quickly picked it up and found the radio industry a fascinating place to work, um, full of fun, um, but uh, you know a lot of hard work too. Mm. Um, but uh, it was a great training ground for, um, for going on to do other things. Um, I, I then went on to uh, work for uh, uh, Greater Entertainment, which is Birch Carroll and Coyle, Greater Union Cinemas, um, in a publicity and marketing role. And yeah, okay, so a, an interesting succession from, from working in radio in the advertising department. Well, you know, you get to do a lot of work with um, the promotional people in a radio station, yeah. so then you pick up what they do and you, and you learn about those things. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was a great job because, uh, you know, I got to work, you know, in Cairns and it's a, always a good thing. Yeah, stay at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, eventually that role evolved into more of the publicity side and meant I was on the road a bit, um, travelling around to various uh, centres to, um, to do publicity with um, different uh, actors and uh, directors of, of, of films to promote them and uh, to, to basically um, be their media minder uh, through those processes and uh, look fascinating. You meet some great people. Does that type of career stand you in good stead for politics? Obviously you've spent a lot of time working with the media, writing press releases and that makes it easy to get used to, I guess, doing programs like this and standing in front of a bunch of characters. Looking back on it, could there have been a better way to do it for you personally, you think? Oh, look, uh, I could well have um, uh, you know, taken a, a, a direct path and tried yeah. to um, go straight from university with a, with a politics degree and uh, go into a, working at a, at a ministerial office or yeah. working as an advisor. But I think um, the experiences I've had have been great life experiences for me. Um, the thing I think that set the foundation for me was when I was at Silla University. I um, was an auxiliary firefighter um, based in Gordonvale. And uh, unfortunately, you, um, you don't go to as many fires. You go to more... Um, car accidents, and uh, you, at, a, you know, at a pretty young age, you see what uh, what happens and uh, what sort of things um, you know people's um, actions can lead to. Mm. So um, it was pretty sobering and uh, made me grow up pretty quickly. Mm. And so um, you know, I think all of those varied experiences um, led me to, uh, I guess, eventually decide to move from the far north to Brisbane to further my career and to you know work in the public service, um, which I did for, for you know six years um, in started in comms uh, media roles and then went into policy um, you know, in areas looking at um, skilled and business migration um, and then uh, working uh, in uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, policy. So um, those sort of things um, do set you up and uh, I think prepare you for, um, for uh, what it's life is like as a politician. So at that stage was that your career path though, looking, looking no further ahead than a, than a lifelong career as a public servant? Oh, I was uh, most certainly. I, you know, I had ambitions to be a director general, um, possibly one day. You know, in many, many you know, um, years ahead. Um, but uh, you know, as I say, things have a way of changing in your life, and uh, um, so that trajectory was was uh, definitely changed. Well, you remember about coming down to Brisbane. You spent a lot of time in Brisbane prior to actually moving here. Oh, I did one year of university down here. Yeah. I did my middle year uh, at University of Queensland. Okay. But I'm proud to say I'm a James Cook University graduate from Cairns. You'd be, you'd be well and truly sick of the winter by now, wouldn't you? Well, actually, going between the different climates is, a, is yeah. pretty unusual. But yeah. um, look, the thing, going up in front of Queensland and living there, you um, you know um, you know what the weather's like and you 
can only take so many clothes off before it's not actually acceptable. At least in uh, in a colder climate, you can dress appropriately. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, but uh, lifestyle is great, and uh, in final coins, and so I, I couldn't ask for more. How do the locals react to you? There's Warren's boy. They are they supportive of you? Are they kind of a bit standoffish? Has their relationship with you changed as they've seen your career ascend? Uh, I guess people have... Um, Without putting words into your mouth about what the locals might be thinking about mm. you, of course. No, sure, sure. Yeah. I think, um, uh, look, I'm very proud to say that I'm my father's son mm. um, and I hope that uh, people see that the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah. Um, I think he was pretty well respected on both sides of politics and um, I try and take a very similar approach. I don't try to antagonise people. I, I'm about outcomes, not politics, uh, in, in many respects. Um, but I think what you have to do is... Uh, just keep uh, keep working hard, and I think you're, you're judged on your work ethic, um, and that's all you can do. Um, but certainly in farm Queensland, uh, uh, I always say that uh, if uh, someone either hasn't been taught, sent off in rugby league, or coached in rugby league by my father, they're probably not from Farnworth, Queensland. So I mean, the, we've got a you know long established history as a family in the region, and uh, um, look, I'm certainly very proud that uh, of you know of the family history we've got. Is there a lot of assistance that comes from your dad? Uh, a lot of advice that he gives you? Does he keep it to himself? Look, um, by, um, by instruction, uh, I've told him to stay as far away as possible. <laughs> um, look, I know that he's uh, got, got a wealth of experience and knowledge, um, and if I need to tap into that, I mean, obviously he'd be a great person to talk to about those things. But uh, I've resisted that because, uh, for the reasons you, you talked about, that mm. people you know, might think that there's uh, some sort of string pulling or whatever else going on. And uh, like, uh, I can certainly say that I've been the member for Mulgrave uh, since 2009. Mm-hmm. I've worked hard in that position. Um, you know, day in, day out, no one else is there, it's me. And, um, you know, my, uh, my uh, caucus colleagues and, uh, have seen fit to, um, you know, that I'm worthy of maybe being their representative in Cabinet. And um, that's an extraordinarily high honour um, and one that I take very seriously. But um, those things don't happen, I think, uh, unless you can do them on your own. So sure. um, I just have this effect of uh, trying to do what you do and things that you can control and do those things well. Uh, so many other things are out of your control, and certainly people's perceptions of you quite often are out of your control too. My guest on the program this evening is Curtis Pitt. You're watching Meet the Ministers, and we'll be back after the break. Mm-hmm. 